The NHRA fans of Southern California had to wait an extra week, but the faithful have been rewarded with a gorgeous day in Pomona. The drivers have been signing autographs, but it's time to don helmet and gloves. The 2004 season is officially underway. Every driver here in Pomona starts today with the dream of winning the Power 8 championship. To win the title, you must win races. Today, race number one of the 23 race season. Today, no more time to prepare. Today, it's time to go racing. The worldwide leader in sports presents exclusive coverage of the $50 million NHRA Powerade Drag Racing Series. Today we begin the chase for the 2004 Powerade Championships with the 44th running of the K&N Filters Winter Nationals from Pomona Raceway in Pomona, California. Hello again, everybody. Marty Reed along with Mike Dunn, Bill Stevens, Dave Reef, and Parker Johnstone in the pits. And, boy, the excitement for the fans is peaking, and the knots in the stomachs of the crews and drivers is tightening. And we get ready, and we start it off with Top Fuel. Larry Dixon looks to become the first man since Joe Amato to win three straight top fuel titles. But 2004 could be the most competitive season ever. Dixon will have to hold off Tony Schumacher, Doug Kalina, and Brandon Bernstein, who returns to compete for top fuel's top spot. Larry Dixon's chances for three straight top fuel championships. Well, if you go back to the last third of last year, he wouldn't have won it. Tony Schumacher outscored him 750 to 532 points. Doug Kalita right behind. And he has qualified number eight. And the last time he would be the first pair out of the gate. And that's not where you want to be. That was 2001. Let's get more from Bill Stevens. Well, Doug Coletta hammered everybody in top fuel qualifying just the way he did last year when he was a low qualifier in the first five races of the year. But here last year, after qualifying number one, he lost in the first round. That's on this team's mind. They want to take full advantage of that poll here in 2004. Thanks, Bill. The engines have been fired down on the starting line. You can see the stands are filling up quickly. Let's take a look at the top fuel ladder presented by Lucas Oil. And there is number one qualifier, second year in a row, Doug Kalitta and Larry Dixon. For the first, only the sixth time in his career that he is going to start out of that number eight spot. More on that in a moment. Here is the right side of the equation. There's Tony Schumacher just a tick behind Doug Kalitta in qualifying. Now let's go right out to the starting line. And there you see Larry Dixon's numbers. The five prior times that he has qualified number eight, he's never made it out of second round. Well, that's a pretty amazing stat, but this team's very, very good, very consistent, but obviously they don't have the kind of performance they need. This is a great matchup because Doug Herbert, would, since he brought on Ed the Ace McCullough, has definitely turned that team around. Dave Reef. And Marty, that's one of the great little subplots. You've got Ed the Ace McCullough, who used to work for Snake Racing, now working for the opposition, of course, Dick LaHaye used to work for Doug Herbert, so guarantee neither one of these guys are going to want to lose to the other. Both cars up in smoke. And it is Larry Dixon, the reigning champion, getting it back under control quicker than Doug Herbert. Herbert got it all kinds of crossed up. It wasn't very pretty at first, but boy, what a pedal job. Well, I tell you, I mean... Right off the hit of the throttle, you see Larry Dixon going into tire smoke. He gets out of the throttle. Look at it. He just feathers that throttle, trying to get it hooked up. That's the key right there. He's still not full throttle, just trying to get that thing go down. And then starts putting cylinders out. And, uh, boy, that thing was definitely hurt going down the other end. But he got to the finish line first. Well, it's not quite the way we expected the season to uh, start out, but what a, a surprise as the way Larry Dixon was able to recover and quickly get the car under control. And uh, as he uh, crosses the finish line ahead of Doug Herbert, so we'll get ready for the next round. And the big question mark now is what will they learn from that, hopefully, and be able to come back in second round and get out of that uh, second round jinx that they've seemed to have when they have qualified number eight? Yeah, I mean, obviously they're going to go back and look at the data and see what happened, but they're also going to look at what the other teams behind them do. I mean, a lot of the teams felt that the conditions were very good, the track was going to be extremely extremely tight but obviously smoking the tires at the hit of the throttle basically that's just too much engine and too much clutch when they first 
initially hit the throttle. You see Doug Herbert on the left side of your screen. He actually spun even sooner than Larry did and then got her completely sideways and had to get out of it. It almost looked like Larry's throttle didn't open all the way when he got back on the throttle. He was trying to feather the throttle and it almost looked like something may have happened where maybe the linkage came loose at the pedal and didn't allow him to get full throttle and that way the car didn't accelerate down to the top end of the race. But lucky for him, he got the win. Yeah, the disadvantage of being that first pair out at every start of the national event. And as we turn our attention back to the starting line, a rematch from last year. First round, Corey McLenathan and Brandon Bernstein. And if you flash back, it was Corey Mack putting Brandon on the trailer. I think Brandon has a sight set on turning that one around. Oh, he definitely does. And he's got a very good race car. Been very consistent as crew chief Tim Richards. Gotten that car down the racetrack on, on all four of their qualifying runs. Ran some good numbers. Going to have to do that again. But obviously, Corey Mack, he remembers that. Corey Mack only made two runs in qualifying. Got down the racetrack. Didn't run the big numbers. But you can never count Jimmy Walsh and that team out. Parker? Well, Marty, Brandon Bernstein is fully recovered, recovered from those injuries he sustained last year at Englishtown. But he told me just before climbing in behind the wheel at that Budweiser Dragster today that he's very anxious to get this first round of eliminations out of the way because through preseason testing and qualifying this weekend, he's been able to click it off if things have gone wrong. But he knows now he's got to face those fears, try to regain that confidence that he lost from that crash last year. Well, you saw the front end of Corey Max car come up into the air. Dad Kenny Bernstein likes the net result, a 4.55 second blast at 324 miles an hour. Well, I'll tell you, Corey, watch on the left side of your screen. Corey Mack really got that thing up there, did a great job, got out of the throttle, got back down to the ground and was able to get back in. Unfortunately, he started spinning the tires and that allowed Brandon to basically accelerate towards the wind. Watch Brandon here. This is a nice run. Not much wrong with this. Front end up in the air, puts it back down. Unlike Corey, that thing stuck through the middle there and made a great pass of 455 to get him into the next round. Dave Reef. Well, Marty, looking forward to Funny Car. It is a new day for Tony Pedregon, and not just because he's beginning it from a position of defending series titleist. He's beginning it from scratch. New car, new sponsor, new team, and Tony Pedregon now the man calling the shots. So what this means is just how quickly this team can outgrow the inevitable growing pains will determine how serious a defense Pedregon will put up. Thanks, Dave. And you get a look at some of the fans who have uh, come back a week after the original scheduled date of this event. And we're glad to have them all here at the season opener as we get ready now for Tony Schumacher and Rhonda Hartman-Smith. More on them, but first, let's go to Bill. Hey, uh, she was dancing around on you a little bit out there. Still a 455, though. Well, thanks. Thanks. Uh, yeah, I did. It kind of moved, had a big, big move down there, about a 1,000 foot, and I uh, just kind of overcorrected a little bit and got it back. So, But, uh, you know, it, great job by the team. These guys are doing a great job, and uh, it's good to get uh, get back in competition, get that one uh, one round done for the Budweiser Lucas Oil Mac Tools team. We're, we're excited. Careful on that overcorrection stuff. Yeah, I know. I don't need to be doing that. <laughs> Well, this is a rematch of last year's first round. Tony Schumacher won that matchup, but in 10 meetings, Ronda has won five of them. Oh, not this time, though. 4.45 seconds, 332 miles an hour. In fact, that is a new track record that he broke by four one thousandth of a second. So Tony Schumacher on the rail. Man, this was just a great run, Marty. This thing was stuck right down the middle, but then at the middle of the course right there, that car made a little bit move towards the center line. Started to get a little bit loose, but still was running 275 miles an hour at the eighth and finishes up with a 445 second elapsed time at over 332 miles per hour. Great job by that team. Fourth quickest run in the sports history. Let's go to Parker. Marty, back in 2000, Jerry Tulliver won three times while he worked his way to third place in the Funny Car Championship. But it's been a year and a half since he last drove in competition, and he comes to the line in an unproven competition. Who is he facing? Well, it's the Cinderella story of former crewman Eric Medlin. Now, Eric has very little competition experience in any form of racing. But what he does have, a load of confidence. Because when he climbs behind the wheel out of his Ford Mustang, he knows that that's the car, this is the team that went to the Funny Car Championship last year. 
So we come down to our next matchup, and it'll be Scott Wise over in the left lane up against the number one qualifier, Doug Kalitta. Now, you would think that Kalitta would have the advantage. He does, numerically. But remember, the last two years in a row here, the number one qualifier has gone out first round in huge upsets, and it was Doug last year and Andrew Cowan the year before that. Yeah, I'm sure Doug Kalitta remembers that very well, but, you know, the car's been running fairly consistently. I mean, he got down the track two out of four runs to qualify. Not as consistent as some of the other cars, so they're going to have to be careful on that. He has just seen Tony Schumacher tattoo the track record at 4.451 seconds. He qualified number one at 4.48 seconds. Doug says not this year. He wins the race easily with 4.53 seconds at 331 miles an hour. So the quickest run of the session goes to Tony Schumacher. When we come back, more highlights from Top Fuel and also a look back with Tony Pedragon, the champion in Funny Car in our new feature, Powerade, Power Time. Back here at Pomona Raceway as uh, you see some of the pre-race festivities that occurred here. Let's go and catch up on the rest of turf. Top Fuel round number one. Scott Kalitta in the left lane. David Baca in the right lane. You see Kalitta was first off the line, but it was Baca at the stripe winning with 4.57 seconds at 322. David Grubman got a solo. Remember what happened to Scott Palmer? We'll show you more of what happened to him in our next segment. But Grubnick goes 4.56 seconds at 299 miles an hour. That brought us to Daryl Russell and John Smith. Three years ago, Daryl Russell won his first race here. Would he win this one? Yes. He takes out John with a 4.53 at 320 miles an hour. And then it would be Clay Milliken and Brady Calavota. And Milliken would go 4.54 seconds, 316 miles an hour, and win with air to spare over Calavota. So let's take a look now at our top fuel ladder presented by Lucas Oil. Lane choice is going to go to Doug Kalitta over Larry Dixon in round two. Daryl Russell over David Grubnick over on the other side. Tony Schumacher and Clay Milliken have the lane choice in those matchups. Now we're going to start a new feature and this week, our Power A Power Time driver. And it's Tony Pedragon, the 2003 Funny Car Champion, is now an owner driver with his own team. Now in this Power Time, he tells us about leaving John Force and talks about Funny Car's newest driver, that being his replacement, Eric Medlin. It was a tough decision, uh, especially contending for a Power A Championship, uh, having a relationship with, with not just John, but John Medlin and Bernie Federley and all the people that, uh, you know, that I was surrounded by. The relationship with myself and John, um, I, I think uh, it wasn't without its challenges. And, and I, I think people understand that now more than they did before. Um, I, I think they can relate. Uh, you tell me, having to compete against your boss, it, you know, it, it uh, has its uh, disadvantages. So uh, that uh, timing, um, uh, the fact that, uh, again, Quaker State wanted to come in as a major sponsor, um, it, it, and I, I think it really at that point it was uh, it was pretty cut and dry what I needed to do. Eric's been there as long as I had. He's, uh, he's been there for over eight years, um, and, and he understands uh, the way that John has structured the team. And, and I, I don't know that I agree uh, that, that a driver should be allowed to get into a professional car with that kind of horsepower, not having any prior experience. I wish that we had a Bush series. But if anybody could do it, Eric can. He's been given the opportunity, and I think he's going to do a good job. He has absolutely the most experienced people around him, um, and I think that's going to help carry him. But uh, he's plenty motivated and got a lot of energy, and I, I think they'll do fine. Guess what? When we come back, Eric Medlin and... Tony Pedragon will be in action in first round of Funny Car here at Pomona at the Winter Nationals. Back here at Pomona Raceway in the K&N Filters Winter Nationals, it's time for Funny Car action. First round about to begin. Finally, after eight seasons, Tony Pedragon won the Power 8 Funny Car title in 2003. But he decided to leave John Force Racing and join Brother Cruz in a new effort. That leaves rookie Eric Medlin to take over the 2003 championship ride. 
And here are the matchups. As you can see, uh, we have the arrow indicating who has the lane choice. And the one we're going to focus in will be over on that right side of the equation, where young Eric Medlin taking over for Tony Pedragon, the number two qualifier, about to go down the track for the first time in competition. And in this installment of the Eric Medlin Diary, the rookie compares being a crewman with being a driver and about his run Saturday when he got the car a little out of shape. It got over and I tried to get it back and then it was getting sideways and out of shape and I thought, well, this is, you know, we're, we're not going to do it right now. So I just shut it off and then it kind of stayed over and I was wanting to get it back over so Worsham didn't think, man, what's this kid doing? He is a rookie. Well, the crew guys don't want to believe it, but believe it or not, when you're driving one of these things, you're more wore out from four rounds of racing and media than you are four rounds of working on it. It's just a little bit different thing. It's a mental, whereas that's physical. So in the end, maybe even deal, but I think I'd rather, I'd rather drive. And the guy he's going to go up against, Jerry Tolliver, coming back to the sport after a little time off. And he's brought Schick back on board with a new sponsorship. And there he is in the right lane. Yeah, Jerry Tolliver's coming on board looking good. But that man right there, John Midland, has a very good race car. But one of the key things is the track conditions are very tight. That means they're very good. They're going to have to watch for tire shake. And if it gets into a severe tire shake, Eric Midland may have to do something. If not, that car goes A to B. Watch out. It should run good. Well, Jerry Tolliver just uh, gave Eric his first taste of defeat. You see the reaction by John at the far end. 4.88 seconds for Jerry. That is a career best ever speed for him at 319 miles an hour. Let's go to Parker. With crew chief John Medlin watching his son make his first run in eliminations, it looks like it got a little bit out of the groove. I know you're all holding your breath on that one. Yeah, no, he was fine. It was just the tune-up was a little off. We saw four shake the tires, and I thought maybe may a little aggressive, and we were. Marty? All right, let's take another look at the run, see if we can uh, show you exactly what happened. Well, he did go into tire shake, but I want to tell you, he did not do a bad job for his first time. You see the thing going to tire shake, he gets out of the throttle, gets back in, it picks the front end up, moves out of the groove a little bit, and starts to spin the tires. He got out of it again, but then by that time, he knew that Jerry Tolliver was done. Actually, not too bad of a job there. We'll take another angle from here, and you can see the car getting out of the groove, and boy, Tolliver. A very strong run. This is the quickest that Jerry has run all week long here in Pomona. Let's go to Dave Reef. Well, Marty, if you guys missed qualifying yesterday, the fans out there, we had some, a lot of excitement. Big fire from Bob Halleck, and then there's this guy, Scott Palmer, who had problems of his own. And take a look at this, at what happened yesterday at the Fairplex. Big trouble as that left rear tire comes apart, takes out part of the wing. Fortunately, Scott able to keep the car under control, but you join me now to... I guess, dissect what really happened. Well, originally, everyone thought the motor exploded at the finish line and shrapnel went through the tire, but we got back. I told everyone the motor was happy at the finish line. I shut it off with the fuel shut off as I was grinding to a halt, but the motor was excellent. Uh, I guess what happened, we either hit some shrapnel or the tire just exploded, took the fuel lines off, which in turn got fuel on the car, sparks lit the fire, and on down the road we go. And you talk about shrapnel, guys. Take a look at some of the pieces and parts. The wheelie bar. Look at the entire side of that shaved off. Of course, there's the spill plate. And, of course, all of this makes for some good pictures on the Internet, too. And back at the starting line, Tony Pedragon wearing the number one on his Quaker State uh, Camaro. Comes to the line. He's already seen his old ride go out in round number one. There are Tony numbers. And he'll be up alongside Corey Lee. This is actually a rematch from last year. Dave Reef. Well, why don't let's talk about Tony Pedregon and this team and their growing pains. It seems like everything is going in the right direction after lackluster results in the first two qualifying sessions going back to last week. It looked like Dickie Venables has got a little better handle on this car as they put two 480 passes on the board. But you mentioned this is a repeat of last year's race. And, and Corey Lee over there in that other lane is definitely not afraid of Tony Pedregon. He beat him en route to going to the finals before red light. And so this could be a pretty good matchup right here. That was the race in November here. The last time Tony was in a John Force Mustang. And guess what? Corey Lee has done it to him again. 
4.86 seconds, 297 miles an hour. So the defending Powerade champion is out in the opening round of the very first race of 2004. Stay with us. We'll have more funny car action when we return here to Pomona. All right, let's get you caught up on the rest of the first round of Funny Car. We started off with a great race. Tim Wilkerson and Ron Cash. Watch this one closely. Wilkerson goes 4.78 seconds, 322 miles an hour. Caps was right behind him at 4.80 at 3.17. Look at the margin of victory. That close. Next up, Dell Worsham left lane. Tommy Johnson Jr. in the right lane. Dell goes 4.81 seconds, 318 miles an hour. And by a car length, takes out TJ. Then the 12-time champ, John Force, against the 92 champ, Cruz Pedregon. And it was John advancing 4.84 seconds, 325 miles an hour. Cruz a 490 at only 3.08. Gary Selzy, Terry Haddock up next. Selzy, 4.79 seconds, 324 miles an hour. Haddock was never a factor in this one. Whit Bazemore's teammate up against Bob Bodie. Baysmore in the left lane, 4.83 seconds, 319 miles an hour in a breeze as he moves to second round. And finally, Gary Densham and Phil Burkhart. And Densham goes 4.76 seconds. That was low, 325 miles an hour, 486 for Phil Burkhart. Take a look now at our funny car ladder presented by Lucas Oil. Gary Densham has the lane choice over his boss. Gary Selzy over his teammate with Bazemore. And then Corey Lee over Jerry Tolliver. And Tim Wilkerson over Del Worsham. Let's check in once again with Bill. Your first round win as a pro. I guess I'll have to wait another week, Eric. Yeah, I don't know. There's a first for everything. There's a first number one qualifier for a week. And then there's number one for a little while till John got off his sandbag and then run that, that big number. But uh, shoot, it was a first for pedaling it for me. So I'm excited about that. But hey, this Syntec Ford, I mean, this thing's awesome. It comes out of the box, runs the numbers. Number one, you know, it's a championship car. So, you know, a good team, you can't get a good team down. These guys are the best. My dad, Jason, Seeds, all the guys. So, you know, we're not worried too much. The first race, I mean, hey, it's a long season. Season, and we're going to have a lot of those, and we can keep getting maybe some hole shots and some round wins. We'll be all right. See you in Phoenix. Thank you. And Phoenix is next week. And when we come back, well, it'll be the first chance we get to see the factory hot rods. Greg Anderson, Warren, Craig, Kurt, and Jason Line, among others. Stay with us. Pro Stock Champion Greg Anderson set records last year for most wins, quickest, and fastest run in Pro Stock history. This year, can he hold off the challenge of a hungry and talented fleet of drivers? And let's show you what happened in the opening round of Pro Stock competition. Mike Edwards and Ricky Smith. And it is Edwards in the left lane, right side of your screen. 6.77 seconds, 203 miles an hour. Ricky Smith, just a little bit behind. On board with Jake Coughlin Jr. He's up against Kenny Koretsky. Koretsky goes red. Jake goes 6.78 seconds, 203 miles an hour. And next up, the venerable professor. A winner here last year. Marty is GM versus Mopar with WJ holding a slight advantage in performance and qualifying. And then watch what happens on the tree. The reaction time, keep an eye on the left lane. W.J. cuts an 18 light. Allen Johnson a 37. Then Warren goes 676 at 204 and was pulling away. Then Sunkart Johnson up against Jerry Haas. Both guys a little late off the line, but K.J. had plenty of horsepower. Kurt goes 6.75 seconds, 204 miles an hour. That brought us up to Larry Morgan and Bruce Allen. Morgan in the left lane. He stops the clock at 6.76 seconds, 204 miles an hour to a 6.79 for Bruce Allen. Then Sean Carlson subbing for the injured Daryl Alderman. Closest to you up against rookie Jason Line, part of Greg Anderson's team. Jason goes red and Sean goes 6.79 seconds, 203 miles an hour for the win. And what about Greg Anderson? Any slip off in performance from last year? 
and not going to happen. He sets a new track record, 6.70 seconds, a new speed record here at the track, 206 miles an hour. Marty, the scary thing about this is it was not a perfect run. Just a little bit of tire shake, a little bit of movement early in the run, and he still runs a 6.70. This car is tough. Fourth quickest run in NHRA Pro Stock history. And, of course, he owns the quickest. Then it's up for Dave Conley and J.R. Carr. Conley, after J.R. goes red, Conley wins it 6.81 seconds, 204 miles an hour. Let's take a look now at our Pro Stock ladder presented by Lucas Oil. And you see that Greg Anderson has the lane choice over Mike Edwards, Larry Morgan over Dave Conley, and over on the other side, Kurt Johnson over Jake Coughlin, and... Warren Johnson over Sean Carlson. When we come back, it's time for Top Fuel. That's Tony Schumacher, Scott Galitta, and there is Don Schumacher cheering the team on. Stay with us. Along with Mike Dunn, Bill Stevens, Dave Reef, Parker Johnstone, I'm Marty Reed. We're at Pomona Raceway for the opening round of the NHRA Powerade Drag Racing Series. And let's check our top fuel ladder presented by Lucas Oil and Doug Kalitta and Daryl Russell have the lane choice here in round number two and over on the other side it's Tony Schumacher and Clay Milliken. Let's check in with Dave Reef. Had a chance to talk to Alan Johnson yesterday, Marty, about what they did in the offseason. And he said about the only thing they worked on in this car is working on the fuel curve. The car had a tendency to run a little bit hot last year, which rocked up some ET in that dominating last half that included the national record. Well, they just put a 445 on the board, the fourth quickest pass in history. That's what that says to me is they've got that curve problem straightened out. And we'll have that round coming up, but first let's uh, do a little comparison in Top Fuel. Well, let's compare a Top Fuel dragster to a Nextel Cup car. A Nextel Cup car in a quarter mile from a standing start will travel at 12.2 seconds and be achieve a speed of 120 miles per hour. Compare that to a Top Fuel dragster, 4.44 seconds at over 333 miles per hour. And as we come out to the starting line, burnouts just completed for Brandon Bernstein on the left side of your screen and Clay Milliken over on the right. Now, Brandon has hooked up with uh, Clay only one time prior. That was back at Atlanta last year, and Clay won that round. And, you know, th this is the third year that Clay's been running at the Winter Nationals, and he's looking to go to his third straight semifinal. Marty, this is a great matchup. I mean, every matchup this round it looks very good in top fuel, but this one especially. Both of these cars have been down the racetrack on every single pass, going back into qualifying, and look very identical. They've ran very comfortable times. This is going to be one of those races where you're going to have to get a good reaction time because it's going to be very close. Parker? Marty, there is a change for Brandon Bernstein. He said on that long road to recovery, every day in the hospital, every day of physical therapy, he thought about nothing but driving this car. He was really under a lot of pressure generated by himself going into that first round of eliminations, but he said now the weight has been lifted off his shoulders, and now he's free to just be the driver that he was coming into the season last year. And, Mike, I don't know if you agree with me, but picking up on your point, I think this is where all of these teams that are still alive are really going to go after it. The first round, some of the crew chiefs may have been a little conservative. Great conditions. I think they're going to let it all hang out. Great race, a great race. 4.48 seconds, 331 miles an hour. That's a career best ET for Brandon Bernstein and a career best ever speed as 331 miles an hour. And Clay ran a 4.55. He was no slouch. I tell you, and Clay was in it to half track, but at that point something went away, the mile an hour fell off, but not for Brandon Bernstein. This thing was right down the middle of the racetrack. And like Phil said, they definitely stepped it up. The conditions are better, a little bit a lot cooler than it was in the first round. They're able to make some more horsepower, but look at this. I mean, these guys were right down there. Not bad, Milliken was pretty close at half track, but then he put cylinders out on the other end. That allowed Brandon Bernstein to pull away for the win. Dave? Just a career, pair of career best for the boys. You welcome into the 40s. That's a fantastic run. Tim Richards, the team did a great job. Budweiser Lucas, Brandon did his job. We needed to get there. And as they get uh, Brandon out at the far end, you already hear the uh, motors coming to life on our next pair. And there is Doug Kalitta closest to you, up against Larry Dixon. And remember, we talked about this before. Larry, the five prior times that he has qualified number eight, which is where he qualified here, he has been eliminated by round two. A huge opportunity for both these drivers to make a statement. The Miller Lite completes its burnout, and here comes Doug Kalitta. 
Let's uh, go back into the pitch, check in with Parker. Well, Tony Pedregon's crew is working on his car, but they're not getting ready for the next round of eliminations. The 03 champ is out. What a difference year makes. Last year qualified third, won the race, went on to win the championship. Any regrets, Tony? No, not at all. I'll tell you the truth. At uh, the same time last year, we got beaten the second round, and we got close to the national record. So this is the nature of the business. I think there's a lot of good things for this Quaker State. Uh, starting actually in a few more days, we get to do it again in Phoenix. Just the nature of uh, bad day fishing for us. That's all. He's still smiling, Bill. Tim Richards just gave you a 448 tune-up, young man. <laughs> That's a... That guy is amazing. Um, this team is doing a great job today, and uh, yeah, we really needed to step it up there because these guys are playing hardball now. So, uh, no, it was a good run for us, and uh, man, it was quick and fast and nice and smooth. It, everything was just great. It was a good run. Thanks. Get ready for some more big numbers. Well, we're going to find out as you look at Dick LaHaye trying to get that man to his third straight Winter Nationals title. Yeah, he'd like nothing better, but they smoked the tires at the hit of the throttle in the first round. They were the first pair out. I'm talking about Larry Dixon and the track conditions were, weren't probably quite as good. I don't look for that to happen, although we could see some tire smoke because both these cars are very powerful, especially that one from Doug Clett, but it'd be more from tire shake if it happens from not having the car moving fast enough. This should be a good race. Larry was never in this one, so he's 0 for 6. I mean, he was... This is one of his worst lights. He'll be kicking himself. A 109. Doug was 045 off the light. And then he goes 4.48 seconds, 330 miles an hour. And Larry Dixon, a 459. So for the only the second time in over two years, Larry Dixon is leaving the Winter Nationals without the points lead. We're back right after this. Oh, just look at the crowd that has come out to Pomona Raceway for the k and Filters Winter Nationals. And they are being treated to some spectacular performance numbers here early in the second round. We're getting ready for David Grubnick and Daryl Russell. And Marty, Daryl Russell and his crew chief Wayne Dupuy have been given all the resources necessary to win by Joe Amato. Not the case last year, but they've got all the good parts, and they're going for it. The performance has definitely stepped up on this team so far. Dave Reef. And guys, remember when Daryl Russell won this race as a rookie in 2001 to become the third guy only to do that? He did it with bracket-like consistency. Look at the numbers again this week. 452, 452, 453, 451. They're a bracket car again. Well, you know what the problem is? You gotta be a 440 car to win today, not a 450, a best career ever run for David Grubnick. 4.49 at 321 miles an hour. Daryl did exactly what you were talking about, Dave. He ran a 452, but you gotta be a little bit quicker. Dave Grubnick is gonna be loving life. I mean, he nailed the tree, 0.029. That's about three hundredths of a second from perfect. It's and Cobb tops that off with a 449 and 321. He's run 278 miles an hour at the eighth mile. Then put a cylinder out before the finish line. Otherwise, that run would have been even quicker. And there's Doug. Let's go to the far end. Doug, we've talked about it heading into this season. 450s are not going to get it done this year on good racetracks in these conditions, and you and your teammate just proved it. Yeah, Connie Coletta, you know, and uh, Ron Tober, Jim Oberhoff, our, our whole uh, Mac Tools team, you know, we we worked at this thing all last year with a lot of different tune-ups, and uh, I'm glad to see it came together. You know, I'm just happy to be driving this thing, and it's running good, so, uh, you know, we'll just go to the next round see what we can do. Guys, that's what we talked about for Larry Dixon. They're going to have to come up with more octane. Parker? Bill, first race of the year, Gary Selzy going in round two, is facing his own teammate, Whit Bazemore. Gary, does that suck? No, it doesn't. You know, uh, we're just going to see who worked harder over the winter, and no matter what, a Schumacher car is going to go to the semis, but we're hoping that the red Oakley Dodge Hemi is the bad boy this time. That thing's got a Hemi, Marty. And that's yet to come as uh, we come back towards the starting line and get ready for David Baca against Tony Schumacher. And again, we're dealing with, as uh, Bill said, you're going to have to run in the 40s to be a player in this round. Unbelievable conditions right now, Marty. And what can Tony Schumacher and Alan Johnson run right now? I mean, that car we know is, is capable of running some very good numbers. Ran a 445 in the first round would probably lend it to everybody, to make everybody step up to run the 440s. But you know, Alan Johnson, he's not hes not shy. He'll get, he'll get after it. If that racetrack will hold a good number, he's going to give it. Parker? 
And Mike, you're right, Alan Johnson isn't shy, but what he told me, the lack of speed, the lack of ET at the beginning of the weekend is because most of the top fuel tuners didn't do testing the way they had hoped to, and so they came here very, very conservative, but now obviously those plans have been thrown out the window, and we're seeing great speeds and low ETs. cars taking their time getting into the beams this was no contest and look at the numbers again 4.48 seconds 331 miles an hour all four winners in the fours Dave Reef well, Marty, we've already documented the fuel curve issues that it looks like, Alan Johnson, you guys have gotten straightened out. Yeah, you know, you got to experiment once in a while, and um, we had some issues to work out, and it's, it's, it's working real good now. We're just, uh, race is going to get tough, so we better stand on it some more. I don't know how much more they can stand on it. They got lane choice by one, 1,000th. Here's the other matchup in uh, Top Fuel. Lane choice going to Doug Kalita over his teammate by one, 100th. I and mean, look at that, one, 1,000th of a second. Schumacher has the lane choice over Brandon Bernstein. Wow, can Funny Car be as good as Top Fuel? We'll come back and find out here at Pomona Raceway. And as we now check in on the uh, ladder, here is a funny car presented by Lucas Oil, and the arrow indicates that Gary Dencham has the lane choice over John Force, and there's the right side of the equation with the lane choice arrows there for Corey Lee and Tim Wilkerson. Let's talk a little bit again about funny car. Well, the funny cars don't quite accelerate as, as quick as the top fuel dragsters, but look at it compared to the next L, next L Cup Series. 12.2 seconds, 121 miles per hour. A funny car, 4.72 seconds at 329 miles per hour. And as we come out to the starting line, first pair up will be Tim Wilkerson in the left lane, Del Worsham in the right lane, and they are already pre-staged and ready to go. Smoke them if you got them, and Dell's got it. It wasn't all that pretty, 6.33 seconds, 215 miles an hour, but it's good enough to put him into the semifinals. Wow, this was definitely a pedal match here. You're gonna see Wilkerson actually smoke the tires. Well, they both smoked tires about the same time, but he, I think Wilkerson had a little bit more momentum, but I tell you what, Del Worsham did his job. He got that car to recover, got it almost to the finish line under power before it quit. Luckily, he had enough momentum to get there ahead of uh, Tim Wilkerson. Do you think maybe these guys got a little greedy after seeing top fuel? I'll uh, tell you what, I mean, and they smoked tires really at the at the hip of the throttle. You see Wilkerson try to pellet, try to get to recover, but he was unable to do it. Got a pretty sideways right there. Unfortunately for him, Del Worsham did a little bit better job and got the finish line first. Right, him, cowboy. Dave Reed. Well, Marty, it seems like the big question when it comes to John Force, the 12-time champ, is how he's going to handle all the things that are going on around him. This has been a very, very busy man in the offseason, the addition of Eric Medlin, his daughter Ashley Force driving in an A-Fuel car. Ashley, earlier today, by the way, in that A-Fuel car, put it in the kitty litter at the far end of the racetrack. So John's got a lot of different things on his mind. But also, somebody else came up to me and pointed out that John Force has basically been dealing with these kinds of things his entire life. If there's a guy that can handle the distractions, it is the 12-time jam. We get ready for the next matchup in Funny Car. Jerry Tolliver and Corey Lee. You want to talk about Tolliver? Remember back 2001, his last full season on tour? He won all of two rounds of racing that entire year. It was probably the worst nightmare of his life. If he wins this one, he will have matched it and be two for two. Corey Lee standing in the way, and here's Jerry's complete funny car resume. 84 total races, you see his round record. Four out of eight in finals, and his best finish third in the points. In fact, he led the points as late as Seattle. Parker? Marty, in answer to your question as to whether the funny car tuners had gotten too greedy after watching the Draxers, I asked that question to John Force's tuner, Austin Coyle, and he said he thinks the track's fallen off a little bit. It won't affect the Draxers very much, but he said it has a much bigger effect on the floppers. 
All right, thanks, Parker. As uh, we get ready for this run, the number in the corners there, the 7 and 15, that's where each driver qualified. Something we've added this year for you. Red light, Corey. Oh, and then you heard the eruption on the Schick Toyota Celica 541, the ET but he is into the semifinals, and like we said, he just won his second round in a row. In 2001, he won two all year long. Work going on back at the uh, Budweiser camp. We've got to take a break. We're coming back right after this. We're back at the K&N Filters Winter National second round of Funny Car, John Force and Gary Dencham on the line right now. Burnout's completed. More on this matchup in a moment. Let's uh, send it to the top end. Bill is with Jerry Tolliver. Jerry Tolliver safely out of his race car. Hey, welcome back to Funny Car. Have a fire. Well, I'll tell you what, it's never, it's never fun to catch on fire, but uh, when you're in that car, you're driving, you don't think about what's happening out there on the outside, and uh, you know, you just want to get that wind light, and get there first, and whatever it takes, and uh, she blew up, she went to the center line, she did all the wrong stuff, but that shit Quattro funny car, I'll tell you what, she took the wind light, and that's the bottom line, that's all that counts. Nice shave. Oh, that was a close shave. <laughs> Well, we have to tell you, he did oil the track, and he oiled once earlier. Under the new rules, you only get one freebie, and so that's his second. He gets charged 500 bucks plus 10 points deducted, so that's where it really hurts. Let's get more on Gary Dencham right now. Dave Reed. Had a chance to chat with Jimmy Brock right before he fired the car. I asked him about this run, and he said he's going to pretty much leave it the same. Uh, he said the crucial part of this run for Gary Dencham will be from about 100 foot to about the 300 foot mark. If they can navigate this racetrack, he said he ought to put another high 470 on the board. Drag race, the wind light to Dencham. 4.75 seconds to a 478, 326 miles an hour. And we have criticized this team in the past when they've had team tactics. That was great. Let's go to Dave Reef. Jimmy, you didn't leave it alone. You went quicker, 475. Yeah, well, I did leave it alone, but maybe the track got a little more friendly for us. And so it worked great job by the crew. We struggled this weekend, but it's coming around for us. That was awesome. Boy, what, what a great side-by-side -side race, Marty. I mean, Force had almost three hundredths of a second off the starting line, but boy, Jimmy Proc making that big horsepower through the middle and on the other end of the racetrack was going 261 miles an hour at the eighth to John's 259 and, and beat him at the finish line by only five thousandths of a second. Let's take a look at John. Nothing wrong with this run. Well, actually, a little bit of tire shake there. Probably cost him the race. Still ran a 478. It looked like he just drove through it, but it definitely slowed the car down at that point. And look at the margin of victory, five one thousand of a second. Take a look at the intervals. Yeah, and you can see John was clearly ahead all the way to the 660, but then Jimmy Proc, like he said, Gary Denson was run fast at the eighth mile, was able to drive around on the other end. Great drag race. Let's go to Bill. Hey, glad you stayed. Oh, boy, I'm glad I stayed. I'm here to tell you. I might be fired after that one, but uh, yeah, I tell you, that was a drag race. I saw John's nose out there, and I mean, I'm thinking this is going to be all good or all bad, and I'm not sure what it is. But, you know, we're here at home with the Automobile Club of Southern California guys, all my friends, all my ex-students, my family, and we're going the next round, and I'm the happiest guy in town. And look for a while during the offseason. Gary will bring his own team out for this season, but he stayed with John Force, and as you can see, he's glad he did. Boy, that was a race, wasn't it? Oh, man. What a great race, and now we've got another pair of teammates coming to the line. Whit Bay's more closest to you, and Gary Selzy. And the side-by-side -side burnouts completed. Last time they met was at Sonoma last year in round two. Selzy won that one, and he went on to win the race. Gary. Let's go back to Bill. Boy, that teammate of yours wore you out on that one, champ. Yeah, well, uh, Jimmy Proc threw a hard ball, and, but so did Austin Coyle. And, uh, you know, AAA, they just signed a four-year deal with us, and uh, they're spending some tr serious money, and they, they want to see their hot rod win. Well, this old heap... <laughs> she's she's talking and but mine's talking too so uh i'm proud of gary you know how i feel about him and uh he's gonna go on and win this race i hope doing a great job driving 
Of course, Gary, a school teacher here in the Southern California area for a long time, a lot of his students in the grandstands today. Yeah, you heard him uh, during your uh, interview talk about those students. And, uh, you know, he speaks at about 60 schools across the country throughout the year talking to kids about staying in school and what it will do for them, uh, stuff that he doesn't get enough praise for. Let's get back to this matchup at hand. I mean, we've seen some great performances, and so far, I think you'd have to give the edge to Selzy in this one, wouldn't you? Yeah, and I think the reason is they've had a, a few more uh, runs. They ran the, the setback supercharger towards the end of last season, so they got a little bit more information than Lee Beard, who switched to that beginning of this season because he was in the points chase. Other than that, they're very evenly matched, I would say. There is Lee Beard. Both cars pre-stage. Here we go. And another good race. 4.80 seconds. 319 miles an hour for Gary Selzy. Witt goes 488 at 314. Yeah, that was a nice pass by Gary Sells. The crew chief Mike Neff got her down the racetrack. Didn't run the big 470 numbers, but it's close as you can come. 480 at 319. Lane Joyce is going to go to Gary Dencham over Gary Selzy by five one hundredths of a second. And in the other matchup, it will be Jerry Tolliver in the two tire smoking affair. Stay with us. Now let's check the matchups in our uh, Pro Stock Ladder presented by Lucas Oil. And the arrow indicates that Greg Anderson and Larry Morgan on the left side have the lane choice. And over on the other side, it is Kirk Johnson and Father Warren with the choice there. Let's talk a little Pro Stock. Well, let's compare the Cup car and the Pro Stock car on acceleration. Now, this is more apples to apples because both of these cars are normally aspirated or carburetor and run on gasoline. Even so, a Pro Stock car will run the quarter mile in just about half a, half the time of a Pro Stock or the uh, Nextel Cup car and over 80 miles an hour faster. And we come out to the starting line with 21-year-old Dave Conley against the 49-year-old veteran Larry Morgan. Both cars pre-staged. Conley closest to you in the right lane with Bill Grumpy Jenkins power and Morgan carrying the Dodge Hemi. No contest. Larry Morgan goes 677, 203 miles an hour. Bob Glidden and the team are moving on to the semifinals. A team last year at the first half couldn't find their way to the starting line. Now they're owning it. Bill? You, sir, are going to be a pain in everybody's cannolis this year. <laughs> I love that cannoli deal. Let me tell you something. This thing is a bad Jose, but the Hemi give up the ghost about 1,100 feet and it threw the belt off and... I think it was trying to run backwards. It started vibrating and doing a lot of weird stuff. But, you know, you got to get up when you race your teammate. And, and, and I know everybody from Dodge. We've got about 200 people from Dodge here in Oakley. And Jim Gennard, everybody's here. I'm just so thrilled to be here and have a car that's doing what it's supposed to do. And I can't wait till it runs right. I tell you, he's had some of his greatest days in professional drag racing on this drag strip. This could be another one today. Well, remember, he won his very first race in top fuel with Alan Johnson. Was number one qualifier right here at this event. Warren Johnson and Sean Carlson up next. Carlson's got a big task. I mean, uh, WJ, his first appearance, 1976 here at the Winter Nationals with Wayne Gap and a guy by the name of Jack Roush. The numbers in the corner of the photo indicates where each driver has qualified for today's race. Carlson's first off the line. At the other end, 6.75 seconds at 204 miles an hour, and the professor tells the 29-year-old rookie, back to the trailer, son. Let's check in with Parker. Marty, after that first round of eliminations, Brandon Bernstein was visibly relieved to have gotten that round under his belt. The next round, you go quicker and faster than you ever have in your career. With that weight off your shoulders, lighter behind the wheel? <laughs> it feels good behind the wheel, but, uh, you know, that's all my guys, Tim and Kim and these guys. I mean, they, that's all his setup, and, and it's just fun to drive these cars when they go that quick and fast. Marty's now got the Budweiser top fueler set on kill mode. And we're looking at his run from that last round where he set his career best. It has been a big weekend for top fuel, and that is the sixth career best that we've seen set in top fuel alone. You're on board with Jake Coughlin. He's going to match up against Kurt Johnson. And you can see how Jake has to sort of look around to try and find the tree. He's in the right lane, Kurt in the left lane. Boy, 
I'll tell you something. When they look at the numbers, Jake Coughlin was off the line first, but Kurt just had way too much horsepower. 6.76 seconds, 204. Jag, a 691. Let's go back and take a look. Well, watch this, Marty. You are going to see some serious tire shake from inside this car. When you can see it inside the car, you know it's really shaking. Watch right here. Right there. Look at that thing shake the tires, and that's what cost him the run. Right there, KJ went by for the win. Tremendous amount of tire shake. And let's go to Bill. With Warren Johnson making a very miserable day for the Dodge boys, Alan Johnson and Sean Carlson, and who's next, WJ? Well, we don't really care what brand it is as long as we get the wind, you know. This uh, performance park Pontiac is slowly creeping up on it. we got a lot of work to do, but apparently a lot of other guys do too, so it'll be back to the grindstone as soon as this thing's over. He is the only driver who's still in line to defend their Winter Nationals title this weekend. And he's going to have lane choice over son Kurt in the semifinals. And right now you're looking at Goliath. Greg Anderson, three times this weekend he has lowered the track record. Both ends of it, ET and speed. I mean, he's just been unbelievable. The, the, the advantage he's had over the rest of the field. Mike Edwards here in the right-hand lane. I mean, he's very, very good on the lights. I don't know if he's going to have four or five hundreds in the bank, though, because uh, Greg Anderson's very consistent also. It's just unbelievable how much horsepower that car's been making. Well, Greg ran the fourth quickest run in history last time out. Remember, the only other track where we have seen an official 660 pass, that was back at Englishtown. Could this be the second track? Conditions are definitely better. He could possibly do it on this run. Staging duel going on. Now they go in. Watch the clock. 671. 205 miles an hour. Mike Edwards had four 100s off the starting line advantage, but he ran a 681, and Greg just has too much horsepower for these guys. So as he coasts on out, we'll take a look at the matchups. Lane choice will be Greg Anderson over Larry Morgan by six one hundredths of a second. And you can see by one one hundredth, Dad has it over Son, Warren over Kerr. And we've got to take commercial break. The work continues back in the Nitro pit. Stay with us. A lot more coming your way from the KN Filters Winter Nationals. When David Grubnick was added as the research and development car, the third car in the Kalita stable, well, many people are, wouldn't think that he would be in this position, but Ossie, Dave, here you find yourself, and my research says you guys have developed another tough car here. Without a doubt, and on the, that 49 there, Connie told me it dropped the cylinder at 3.7 seconds, something like that. That's why our mile per hour was down. So we still are research and development because it was going to run quicker, but he just seems to have a handle on this, and, man, I can't say enough. I, the, the guys, if you see all the guys over here working. This is the greatest bunch I have ever, ever worked with, and, and I owe them an enormous amount. But let's look forward now. It's an all 440 matchup with a guy out of this team. That's going to be uh, a pretty tall order. What's the plan so far? Well, I'm, I don't know. I'll be told. Uh, you know, Dougie's my, he's my senior teammate, so wh whatever they tell me to do, obviously I'll do it. And that's how it's going to go. Parker? For three-time top fuel champ Gary Selzy, the transition to the funny car category two years ago did not go smoothly. But last year, he and crew chief Mike Neff made a fundamental change to this program. They decided to go back to basics after the Bristol race. And with that change came Gary's first win. In fact, he went on to record the five fastest passes in funny car history. Gary Selzy, championship contender? Absolutely, Marty. Thank you, Parker. As we get ready, it'll be top fuel semifinals when we come back. And if you can't run a 440, you're a pooch. Along with Mike Dunn, Bill Stevens, Dave Reef, and Parker Johnstone, I'm Marty Reed, and we're at the KN Filters Winter Nationals. Glad you're with us. Semifinal action in top fuel coming your way. And let's uh, talk about our number one story, number one qualifier, Doug Coletta. Notice him flipped the throttle, pedaled it, and in the first round, won with a 4.53. Then he comes back in the second round and takes down the defending champion, Larry Dixon, with a 4.48 second blast. And he's got lane choice over teammate David Grubnick. Grubnick runs 4.49 a career best and does not have lane choice. Tony Schumacher, Brandon Bernstein, the first time in NHRA Power Raid history, all four semifinalists are in the 440s to make it to this round of racing. And first up, it will be Brandon Bernstein closest to you and Tony Schumacher. And here are the 
elapsed times of the day, as you can see. Well, this is just a great matchup, Martin. You know, Tony Schumacher has lane choice. He's chosen the left lane, but, you know, Brandon Bernstein ran that number in the right-hand lane, so the lanes are very, very evenly matched, even though most of the teams seem to be favoring that left-hand lane. Now, I'll tell you, these, both these cars have been down the racetrack every single run, going all the way back into qualifying. They've ran good numbers, so the drivers are really going to have to be on their game on the starting line. No one in the semifinals has ever won the Winter Nationals, but these two guys have fathers who have won. Kenny Bernstein in both Funny Car and Top Fuel, and, of course, Don Schumacher, Tony's dad won as well. Again, the numbers in red signify where they qualify today. Here we go. All Schumacher, 4.47 seconds, 330 miles an hour. Brandon slowed a little bit. 462 at 317. Well, I tell you, there's not much wrong with this run. I mean, Tony Schumacher did his job on the starting line. Look at that car, nice and smooth all the way through the middle of the course, 273 miles per hour at the middle, and just nice, smooth run. 447 at over 330 miles per hour. Brandon Bernstein on the left. I think he had a cylinder out. You saw one go out towards the finish line, drive him over towards the center, but that car was soft right from the start. You see Don Schumacher saying, yes, sir, we're going to the finals, Dave Reeves. Just quickly with Alan Johnson, you say it looked like the car rattled him early a little bit. Yeah, it looked like it was a little weak down low and rattled the tires, and then it started spinning. It was all over the track. So I think if we make a good straight run, we can get it into 45 or so. Weak? Yeah, he runs 445, 448, and now 447. I think they've got it pretty well handled. Time now for our other top fuel semifinal. The Mac Tools top fueler of Doug Kalitta, the number one qualifier. And David Grubnick in the ride of his life, also in a Connie Kalitta top fueler. Let's go to the far end, Bill. Tony, from September on last year, you and your crew chief, Alan Johnson, changed all the rules out here in top fuel, and there's another indication of it. <coughs> you got to drink the stuff, not breathe it. I don't blame you. It gets hot in there. Uh, Alan's a, he's a man, you know. <coughs> He's proved it a hundred times with three world championships, <clears throat> world championships, and all the wins he's had. But he can assemble not only the best crew, but the best uh, assembly of parts, and he can make a car run, whether it's sunny out or cloudy out. Man, the U.S. Army car going to the finals. No matter what happens, we're going to leave Pomona one or two in the world. Just a great, outstanding run for for the whole U.S. Army. We also got Mad Code Tools and Gates and all the people that help us. But most importantly, my beautiful wife Kara, Anthony, and Michael at home. And one's for you guys. Let's see who Tony gets in the final. Tony into his 32nd career final. And now it's up to Doug Kalitta. You know, the only Kalitta ever to win the Winter Nationals was Connie back in 1967. And Doug Kalitta has taken the right-hand lane. He's done that all, all day long. And he obviously likes what he sees over there. And he did a great job in that first round when he shook the tires and pelted to get him this far. Kalitta right at the finish line. It sort of laid over a little bit. 4.51 seconds, slowing to 284 miles an hour. And you saw Grubnik had all kinds of problems with cylinders going. I'll tell you, this car was really on a run. It went 302 to the eighth at almost 280 miles per hour. Then you're going to see something go away just before the 1,000-foot mark. And then basically coasted across the finish line. Still ran a 451 at only 284 miles. Look at his head drop down there when that thing quit running. And we'll set the finals for you as uh, you see Doug at the far end of the racetrack just unbuckling. And lane choice will go to Tony Schumacher, 447 to Doug's 4.51 second run. We've got to take commercial break. Stay with us. Funny Car Semifinals when we return to Pomona Raceway and the K&N Filters Winter Nationals. Back here at Pomona Raceway, the burnout's completed for our first semifinal matchup. That is Jerry Tolliver over in the left lane. He'll be up alongside of Del Worsham. And uh, we'll show you the matchups on our Funny Car Ladder presented by Luke Soil. Arrow indicates Densham's got the lane choice over Gary Selzy. That's coming up. And the one we're going to be looking at that we've just talked about will be Del Worsham and Jerry Tolliver. And, of course, Tolliver has the lane choice there. Rick. 
Stewart, chief starter for the NHRA. You see the back as they back up the Schick Toyota. The last time Jerry Tolliver went to a final was 2000. That was the fall Dallas race. That very same year, he won this race as he went on to finish third in the championship points. Parker. Marty, it's a big weekend for the Worships. Remember when we last met here in November? Dell won in the funny car category. It's Dell's 250th start as a funny car driver. And yesterday was well, Grandma Worships' 83rd birthday. They want to take one home for the team. Yeah, if you remember how bizarre that final was here at the last race last year, it was uh, Dell red lighting, and then Corey Lee crossed the center line, giving the win right back to Dell. And Jerry Tolliver, 4.73 seconds, a career best ET and a career best speed of 328 miles an hour. And welcome back to Funny Car, Jerry Tolliver. Wow, he's gotta be happy. I mean, he would have been happy just going to the semifinals, but now he goes out there and runs 473. I mean, this is unbelievable, 328 miles per hour. Watch that, right down the middle of the racetrack after smoking the tires of the previous round. He did get lane choice, he chose that left-hand lane. You know, that's an Allen jo Johnson setup over there. Keith Adams has worked with Allen Johnson for a number of years just tuning that race car, and what a job he did here. Boy, they pulled this thing out of nowhere. Best run before this lap was a 488. Take a look at Super Slow Mo, Adele Worsham. You'll see the problem. There he is pedaling. And we can tell you that's the fourth fastest run in the history of Funny Car with Jerry Tolliver's 328. Let's go to the far end. Talk to Bill. Quickly with Doug Kalitta, who's been going quickly today, except on that run. But at the eighth mile, you were doing about 280 miles an hour before you lost the belt. Yeah, I tell you, the car was it left strong. I, I knew it was going to be on a good run there, but it threw the bell off just before the finish. And uh, I think we'll have something for Tony in the final there. Uh, you know, the car's running strong. And... You know, Connie and the guys are working hard on this Mac Tools car, so we'll see what we can do. Remember, at the top of the show, the number one qualifier wants to cash in this time around. Couldn't do it here last year. Dave? Hey, let's face it, the Mopar and the GM boys don't exactly see eye to eye, but I bet, Larry Morgan, there's a bunch of GM guys that want to see a Mopar beat that Greg Anderson. You're next in line. Well, I think the pair in front of me would really like that. Hey, we're just out here trying to win races for Dodge and Mopar. That's what it's all about, and all the guys that work real hard for me, that's what we're trying to do. All right, thanks, Dave. As we get ready for our next semifinal, there's Gary Densham. Gary Selzy has also completed his burnout. And Jerry Tolliver at the far end of the racetrack going to his ninth career final. Bill, it's yours. Hey, Jerry. All the... Uh, what a run. Jerry, over here. Oh, sorry, sorry. All the other guys in hey, Funny man, Car. This deal. I haven't been here for a long time. <laughs> yeah. The other guys in Funny Car are calling Schick right now and saying, you sure you want to do this? I mean, they're in trouble now. Well, let me tell you something. I didn't even know we ran yet, but I hear it was a good number. 473, 328. 328. That's 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 good. This, listen, this whole team is is, is is something to be proud of. These guys put three motors in between this round. This shit Quattro Toyota is going to be something to deal with. I mean, that that's how things are done. Like that, under the gun, under the pressure. The guys never gave up to the last second. They're calling the NHRA saying, "Look, we want to, we got to run this thing. We're not done yet." And I'm in the car, in the pits, towing up there. We never warmed up nothing. But look what happens. You never, never give up. You gotta give this guy his own show. <laughs> never give up. You see Gary Dencham's numbers there when he defeated the boss, John Force, in the last round. He's looking to go to his 16th final. And Gary Selzy looking to go to his 41st career final in both Top Fuel and Funny Car. Denchum, 4.77 seconds, 326 miles an hour. You saw Selzy have to pedal the car, and that's all Gary needed as he pulled away. Yeah, another good run by that team. Jimmy Proc did a good job on the tune-up. You saw Gary basically spin the tires, have the back pedal. He got to recover, but unfortunately for him, Gary Denchum was not having any problems whatsoever 
going right down that racetrack to a 477 at over 326 miles per hour. And watch this. This is a good pedal job. He goes out there, starts to spin, actually sp hazes the tires a little bit, out of it, back on the throttle, gets it to recover. Would have been a good job. It was a good job, but unfortunately for him, Gary Dinsham wasn't having any problems over near the other lane. Take a look at the matchup. The lane choice will go to Jerry Tolliver by four one hundredths of a second over that man right there, Gary Dinsham. Stay with us when we come back. Factory Hot Rod semifinals. Can anybody take out Greg Anderson? Come on back and find out. We're back at Pomona Raceway as you look at the mountains off in the distance, snow up on the peaks, but the action on the track has been plenty hot. In fact, let's talk to one of the hottest, Gary Dentium, he's with Bill. Man, that AAA Mustang's the fountain of youth. Yes, it is. I'm here to tell you, you know, and it's so exciting to do good here in front of the hometown friends. Everybody talks about the great race. Indianapolis, 50-year anniversary this year. It's going to be terrific. But, you know, I grew up here in Southern California. I sit on old wooden grandstands back there in the 60s when I was in high school. And be able to be in the final here in Nitro Funny Car for AAA and Ford and John Force and everybody, you ain't going to get a happier guy, I'm here to tell you. <laughs> You'll be even happier after the next round if we're talking again. Thanks, Bill. Let's take a look at the Pro Stock Ladder presented by Lucas Oil. And you see Greg Anderson has lane choice over Larry Morgan. And the first matchup will be the father-son combo. Warren Johnson with the lane choice over Kirk Johnson. And WJ right there, the defending event winner here from last year. These guys have met a total of 51 times. WJ has won 35 of the prior meetings, but they both have won here at the Winter Nationals. WJ five times. Kurt, 2001. And Marty, performance-wise, there's not much of a difference. Warren Johnson on the light's been a little bit inconsistent. He's usually that way anyway. And KJ, usually he's very consistent. He's been a little bit off today. So I think it's going to be decided on the starting line because, like I said, performance-wise, they're very equally matched. The professor does it again. 6.74 seconds, 204 the speed to 676 for Kurt Johnson. Well, this was all Warren Johnson. He had three hundreds off the starting line, carrying that front end down the racetrack. Picked up another couple hundreds off the on the other end to get the win. And as you see the super slow-mo, let's check in with Dave Reed. Well, Marty, if we look forward to the Top Fuel Funnel 1, get an idea of what it's going to be like. All we have to do is look back to the Budweiser shootout that was held last fall. It was Doug Kalina and it was Tony Schumacher. And if you remember that race, it was side-by-side -side 40s. Doug Kalina winning with a 4.47 9-second pass. Beat Tony Schumacher's quicker but losing 447. And I guarantee you one thing, Schumacher hasn't forgotten about that either. Side-by-side -side 40 cars probably coming up, especially if the Kalitas can figure out a way to keep that belt on, which came off at 1,000 foot. And one guy we haven't uh, sung his praises enough on that car is the new crew chief, Ron Tobler. He obviously has melded very quickly with Connie Kalita and the entire team as they are in their first final together. Now you're looking at the king of the mountain in pro stock. Greg Anderson in the left lane. Larry Morgan over in the right lane. Greg's 671. Or his 670. The sixth quickest ever in pro stock. Say goodnight, Larry. And he does it again. Greg Anderson, 6.71 seconds, 205 miles an hour. Larry goes 679 at 204. So Greg is into his 28th career final. And let's check in with the man who's going to his 143rd career final. Right there, he's with Bill. Something about this place, Warren Johnson, the defending event champ, going to another final. And do you have enough for Greg Anderson? Well, you know... We're doing the best we can at this point in time. We'll obviously got to tune up just a little bit more, you know, but you got GM Performance Parts, Pontiac, Goodyear, Redline Oil, Balzers, Motive Gear, all these people behind you. You'll sooner or later be successful. The professor races the student in the final round of Pro Stock. Well, and remember, yesterday at qualifying, you talked to him, Bill, and he said, who's Greg Anderson? I mean, uh, the love is not there between these two. Take another look at this run. I think the professor's going to find out who Greg Anderson is in the final. I'll tell you what, Greg Anderson, Larry Morgan had a hundredth of a second off the starting line, but Greg Anderson made it up in 60 feet and then just waved goodbye as he just marched on for another victory.
Hot, straight, and normal. Let's go to Bill. It's so nice in this sport when two old friends get to meet again in the final round. Yeah, who would those be? Yeah. <laughs> this ought to be interesting. Uh, I don't think either, either one of us is going to need any motivation on this one. Uh, you know, deep down we probably like each other, but right now, right now, I don't think that we're going to show that. I'm going up there and I'm going to try and kick his butt. I would not like to be Warren Johnson at this juncture. All right, let's take a look at the matchups. Lane Choice is going to go to Greg Anderson by three one hundredths of a second over Warren Johnson. And it's going to be a dandy. You can tell the love is just flowing between the two of them as we ride along as we head to commercial break. Stay with us. In first round funny car action today, Jerry Tulliver faced the Cinderella story of Eric Medlin. But Jerry Tulliver has his own Cinderella story. He put this team together back on December 1st of last year. Preseason testing did not go well. Blown engines, a split body. And Jerry, you showed up here, didn't make a clean pass till the semifinals, relying on your natural talent and experience. You're the fastest and quickest of the weekend. Are you a little surprised? Well, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm pleased. I'm extremely pleased. This Chiquacho team has done extremely well. And uh, they come together. These guys are veterans. They've been around, the, you know, the game for a long time. They know what they're doing. So I'm not shocked by this. I mean, am I overwhelmed with the, with the experience and what's going on? Yeah, this is pretty, it's pretty overwhelming. But I'm not shocked. These, I've got good guys over here. First race for this new team, Dave, and they're looking for their first win. And Parker, it's quite the story for Gary Densham. In December, he didn't know what he'd be doing. Certainly thought he wouldn't be back with John Force, but here he is, a chance to go after his seventh career win. Now, the big question over there, Gary, is can that car repeat? That's not a question you even have to entertain. Yeah, I tell you, I mean, it's great to be back with John Force racing the Auto Club and all the guys, but the big deal is keeping Jimmy Frock and my whole crew together because they're absolutely unbelievable. I was happy to see Jerry Tolliver back in the sport. Great guy. Uh, all we can do is try and take him out now. Jimmy says he's not going to do too much of this car. It's been a bracket-like effort, 75, 76, and he's 77. Oh, that's the bottom line. If we go out there and run 75, then repeat with that 73, I'll be the first guy to shake Jerry's hand. Jimmy Prock is just checking things over. Is everybody over here praying lightning does not strike twice for Jerry Tolliver. Parker? And Dave in the Pro Stock Final at six-time champ, Warren Johnson up against last year's champ, Greg Anderson. Warren, no one has to explain to you what you're up against. Every time I've come by this car today, you're underneath it, all over it, working on it. What has to happen for you to take this race? All we have to do is win. That's simple. Perfect light with a perfect car? Well, we're close enough that we can do enough damage. We'll just take it as, uh, as it happens. I think uh, we've got enough out there. A little dis uh, discrepancy in the right-hand lane, which we'll probably be in, but Kurt made a good run in that uh, with his AC Delco Cavalier before, so... I think uh, we're looking in pretty good shape. Now, the last time you won back in Reading, it was also a rain delay race. Does that play into the overall superstition mojo of racers, or you, being the professor, just care about the technical facts, and that's all that matters? Just the technical stuff. Just the facts, ma'am. Just the facts. Marty? All right. Thanks, guys. As you can see, the work continues, and we are getting ready for the finals here at the K&N Filters Winter Nationals. Stay with us. Back here at the K&N Filters Winter Nationals, everybody standing as we're getting ready for the finals. It is time to do some serious ground pounding. Who's it going to be in pro stock? Greg Anderson, the defending champion, or six-time champ, Warren Johnson. In funny car, would you have picked Gary Denchim or Jerry Tolliver at the beginning of the day? And what about top fuel? It's Tony Schumacher or Doug Kalitta. Neither one has ever won. Let's check in with Parker. In the top fuel final, it's Doug Coletta versus Tony Schumacher. Number two in the points last year versus number three. Doug Coletta last year, nine number one qualifying positions. Tony Schumacher, five. This guy, the holder of the national speed record. Tony Schumacher, well, he holds the national elapsed time record. They're your number one and two qualifiers this weekend. It should be an incredible final because neither tuner on either car is willing to walk away from a good fight. It's either going to be big speeds, low elapsed times, or a lot of smoke either way it should be a great race so we get ready now for our first of our three professional category finals and it is the professor warren johnson trying to knock off the defending power a champion and that is greg anderson on board with greg he has just been unstoppable 
setting a new track record here, 6.706 seconds at 2.06. For WJ, well, he's looking to pick up his, well, it would be his 93rd career win. He leads by a bunch over everybody else. That's how he got to the final. But if he also picks up a win, it would be 23 straight years in a row where he has at least one win. And there's Greg Anderson's road to the final. Let's get more from Bill. There's really some bad karma between these two guys. Just before the season began, a crew member for Warren Johnson went to work for Greg Anderson and allegedly took a notebook with him that had beadlock tire testing data into it. Now, I don't know exactly who's telling the truth on this deal. Both sides say that uh, the other side is at fault, but this is personal. This race right here, it's more than just two cars on a drag strip. Last minute wheelie bar adjustment standard procedure see if we'll have a staging duel here both cars pre-staged Warren's in here we go big advantage Greg Anderson air to spare 6.71 seconds, 205 miles an hour. Warren was never a factor in this one as Greg wins his 17th career national event victory. Boy, you're right, Marty. Warren Johnson was just dead late. Greg Anderson had 600 of a second off the starting line. And trust me, Warren needed the 600s on him just to so have a shot at getting him. Let's watch WJ right here. He went in first was really late off the starting line. The car actually ran pretty good. He ran his normal number, but unfortunately, he's still about five hundredths of a second off of what Greg Anderson run, and you had six hundredths off the old tree. And watch, I mean, he's just gonna be way behind there. This is like, wave goodbye. See you, Warren. Let's go to Parker. I'm with Greg Anderson's team owner, Ken Black. Ken, you dominated the series last year. You picked up right where you left off. New track record, number one qualifier. Big win, Greg, great at the lights. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much. Uh, all the credit goes to the crew. They were great. The off season, I don't know how many thousand hours they put in on engines, on new chassis, testing. Uh, these guys just don't know the, the meaning of the word uh, don't quit. So they're fantastic. I give all the credit to the crew. All that work's paid off, Bill. Greg Anderson, it ain't bragging when you can back it up. It sure feels good, Bill. It's been a long winter and a lot of accusations, and you know what? We just made us work harder. They can say what we want. We have an awesome team here. This is absolutely the best race car I've ever had. Jerry Haas, thank you very much. It, it's magic. The motor under the hood is new. Joe and Eric, you're responsible for that. Thank you very much. But at here at the racetrack, Rob Downing and Jeff Furley and Jason Line, and my two guys, Nate and Daniel, what a job they've done. Bradley, thank you guys so much. We've just got the total package. And honey, I miss you guys. I wish you were here. Cody, Brittany, I love you. Maybe I'll be home tomorrow. Yeah. Best in class. Well, it's the third time those two have met in a final. The first time, though, that Greg has ever beaten Warren. Now, let's go to uh, the Funny Car Final up next. But first, check in with Dave Reef. Warren, looks like this field has an albatross again. Well, you know... Anytime you get to the final, you can't say it was a bad day. You know, we just got outran by a little bit, but, you know, we can fix that. And he'll get a chance next week when we head to Phoenix. Here's Jerry Tolliver in the Toyota. Now, you remember back in 1982, Tim Gross ran a Datsun. Well, Selzy and Sarver and Tolliver have run a Toyota, but no import-bodied funny car has ever won a national event. Could today be the first day? Well, it definitely could be. I mean, Jerry Tolliver ran awfully good that previous round, but I'll tell you what, Gary Dingham, as you look at his round wins, I mean, he was very, he's been very consistent all day, but Jerry Tolliver threw up that 473 on the board the last round. Jimmy Prock was kind of looking at just leaving it the same because it's been consistent, but he wanted to maybe add just a little bit to it just to see if he can run maybe a 474 or so. Parker? Marty, a concern for the finalists tonight in the left lane as they pull up to get staged. The sun has set just above the grandstand, so when those drivers in the left lane are looking at the tree, they're almost looking directly into the sun. And it can have an effect here. We've seen that before. Toyota has just made some history, and Jerry Tolliver, welcome back to the winner's circle for the first time in a long time since, uh, what, about 2000? And uh, Jerry Tolliver, 
was very, very late off the line compared to Gary. Maybe the sun was a factor, but boy, he just got down the track, 482. Well, the team did a good job, but you saw Gary Dinsett there. He actually was starting to roll the light before the tree was activated. Then it went out there and shook. You see a backpedal, and that was all Jerry Tolliver needed. At that point, he just drove away. The team had a great tune-up on that race car. Boy, you can't say enough about what that team has done coming in here for the first race. They really struggled in testing, but boy, they got together with that semifinal run of 473, and then to come back around 482 and get the final round victory, great job. His second Winter Nationals title, and the last win he had was St. Louis back in 2000. Parker? I'm with Jerry Tulliver's crew chief, Keith Adams. Unbelievable, this team comes together so late, so many problems in testing. You show up for the first race, bang, boom, bum, here you are, a win. I'd just like to thank Alan Johnson and Jerry Tulliver for giving me a chance to do this, and thank my crew for working 12 hours a day, seven days a week for the last two, three months, and putting all this whole team together, and finally it's, the car's coming together, getting in sync with the engine, and unbelievable, I can't, I don't know what else to say. Congratulations. Let's go up to the far end with Bill. Oh, boy. Start this deal up. I'm speechless. You're not. Oh, I'm speechless. Listen, it took a while to get back in this winter circle. These don't come easy. This shit Quattro team is unbelievable. These guys dug down deep today. We had, we had lots of problems in the pits, but we got through it. We got here. Powerade, shit Quattro, NHRA. Man, you gotta love it. <laughs> Jerry, on NHRA Today last week, you were asked what your expectations were this year, and you said, wait, we go out to win the championship, and I think you took a big step today. Let me tell you something. Oh, I, hey, I, I think so. I, I, someone asked me if I was surprised, and I said, no, I'm not surprised. I've got a great team. I've got good guys. I've got a great sponsor with Chiquacho, Toyota. I mean, i got so many people to thank. i got to dedicate this to my brother, Craig Tolliver, and his new bright charity. They're doing a show car program in Arizona, and he's so mad at me because he's there and I'm winning that I had to say something on TV or he'll never talk to me again. Nobody could get their hands on this Toyota today. Let's go to Dave. Gary Densham, it shook you pedaled. It's about the end of the story. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, uh, I don't think there's anything wrong with that lane. I don't think we made any calls that were wrong. We just hadn't been there all day, and... Uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, the, those guys did a great job, but you're just happy to do as well as we did here in Southern California in, in front of Auto Club. And, and you know, John Force's team, great team. Jimmy Proc, my guys, are absolutely unbelievable. And, and you know, it's situation. We will win some races, and by God, we got a nice hot rod. Great start for the funny car year. I'll tell you what, like we talked about, uh, we didn't expect those two in the final, but uh, they're in the radar screen now. Tony Schumacher, we did expect things from this team, and they have delivered. I mean, this car has been running in the 40s all day long. Doug Kalita looking for his first ever Winter Nationals. Whoa, wait a minute, Doug, he's got a problem. Yeah, big time problem there. Oh, oh, and a big shot of flame came out, and one of the crew members almost got singed. So this is going to be a solo run for Tony Schumacher. Oh, and the car lays down on him. He has him mixing him up at the top end. Goes 465 at 243, and the Kalita camp is going to be going again. Oh, what if? We could have made the run. Yeah, that's a tough break, I'll tell you. I mean, obviously, uh, Doug Kalita had a great car all day, but, you know, Tony Schumacher, he was on a very good run. I mean, he was going to run it all the way through there. It went 303 at 275 to the eighth, but then uh, the engine went away, So, uh, but he got the win. It is his 12th top fuel win. Hate to tell you this, but he ties you in top fuel wins now. And let me tell you, he's going to get plenty more before the, this year's up. Take a look at the replay there, and boy, it, it, we are so lucky, and so are the guys that nobody was there. And then watch what happens right here. One of the guys comes in, and bam! And if he'd have been any closer... He'd have been severely injured. Uh, let's check in with Parker. With crew chief Ron Tobler. Ron, big disappointment, I know. What went wrong at the start line? Well, I'm not sure. We uh, had some kind of leak in the front of the engine. It was putting oil out pretty good, so it wasn't worth sending him down the track in that condition. So sorry. Yeah, well, it's a good start for the year for Coletta and Mac Tools and everybody, and we wanted to get off to a good start, and I think we did, so we hope to continue at Phoenix. Best of luck in Phoenix, Marty. I'll tell you what, Ron Tobler has stepped in and really fit very well with this team, and they are going to be heard from before the season is over. And there you see Tony Schumacher. We're going to have to wait to get a chance to talk to him. Take another look at this run. Yeah, once again, Marty, he was on a very good run. To run 303 at 275 miles an hour at 8th, it was going to run another 440 run. 
But I'll tell you, right after the half track, something went away. Engine broke, and he just coasted. But luckily, he got the win. Tony Schumacher, the Auto Club Finals got away from you in November. You weren't going to let that happen again. No, they did, and uh, we got real lucky there, to be honest with you. I'm not sure what happened to Doug Coletta's car. Our car shut off at half track, just past half track. You know, we had the chance to go for a world record there. We, we already had the backup, the 45 from this morning. So I went in nice and shallow, and I was on a good run. Something happened. It laid over hard. No reason to blow it up. No reason to oil it down. But for the United States Army, for all the great soldiers coming back right now, Colonel Nickerson here, man. Hoo -ah. I got my lucky Army Ranger shirt on. It says, never shall I fail a comrade, man. And today we did. We did a great job. So had Doug not had the problem, we didn't know maybe you clicked it off early. It was definitely a mechanical problem, and the results would have been different. Well, the results could have been different. It's hard to say. You know, I mean, obviously he had a problem first, and uh, the 1,320-foot race, he didn't even make it up for the start, but he is going to be brutal this year, man. We know that for a fact. It's going to be awesome racing. Probably a handful of cars, maybe a few more that are going to be in this uh, contention for the Powerade Championship. But uh, thank you to k and Filters for doing this for us. This is great. This is a great race. Pomona's been a dream of mine for a long time. I mean, this is the one of the biggest races of the year. It's the one that starts it, the one that ends it, and we're just so proud to have this trophy to add to the show. Let's go to Parker. And, Bill, thankfully, no one on Doug Coletta's crew is injured, but Doug, after qualifying number one, kicking rear ends and taking names all day long, can there be anything more frustrating to have a car not working for you at the start line and then see Tony Schumacher click it off past half-track? Yeah, I tell you, it was pretty disappointing. It did the burnout, you know, and uh, the car was actually shaking pretty good. So I was trying to let the guys know, but I don't think they could hear me. And, uh, you know, then we pushed the thing back and, you know, they shut it off. But it's pretty pretty frustrating. Uh, you know, disappointed for our sponsors, Mac Tools, uh, you know, Redline Oil, Technicoat. You know, we had a great uh, effort going here today. And, uh, you know, just too bad that we couldn't get it done. Well, you're number two in the championship last year. Certainly the season this year started much better than last year. You are, with Tony, the two championship contenders, the number one picks of people. So you've got to feel pretty good about the way the weekend went. Yeah, you know, uh, I was very confident the car was going to run real strong. You know, the run before it threw the belt off, and uh, there was a little problem there, but we got that squared away. And I think it was, it was going to be on a good run, and I'm sure it would have been on a good run, and we would have gave them, uh, you know, the fans their money's worth out here. But... Uh, We'll go to Phoenix, you know, we're, we're second, you know, obviously uh, we're hoping to improve on that. We'll just keep on pressing on. Marty, Doug's frustrated, but thankfully Phoenix is only a week away and they hope to finish the job they started here today. Well, think about this. This is the first time, only the second time in over two years that somebody other than Larry Dixon has led the top fuel points. We'll wrap it up when we come back to Pomona. I'm with Tony Schumacher's tutor, Alan Johnson. Alan, you were just asked how you were doing. You said on a scale of 1 to 10, it was an 11. Uh, you're right. It's just, you know, it's a great day for the U.S. Army. Uh, uh, you know, we're just having a good time out here. And the car ran great today. Tony did a good job. The crew was flawless. And, uh, you know, what a way to start the year. Now, you said it's not going to be enough to do what we've seen in the previous years. The game for everyone in Top Fuel is going to step up and step up significantly, and looks like you and the Colettas are leading the charge. Well, yeah, you know, right now, there's, you know, there's four or five cars that are all pretty competitive, you know, and uh, um, Larry Dixon's car was, he was a little under his performance level this weekend, but I, I look for that to turn around, so I think it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good year in Top Fuel. Big smiles on the leap year day. Only comes once every four years. It's been a great day for Allen and their team, Marty. Well, I'll tell you what. It has been an exciting day of racing, and the best part is, Mike, we get to do it all again next week. Boy, and I can't wait. Top Fuel's been looking good. I mean, funny car. What a, what a great day for Jerry Tolliver and that new team. It's going to be fun. Well, thanks so much for joining us here on the NHRA Power at Drag Racing Series. For Mike Dunn, Bill Stevens, Dave Reed, Parker Johnstone, and our entire ESPN2 crew, I'm Marty Reed saying so long for now. NBA Fast Break is coming up next here on ESPN2. We'll tell you this has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more, log on to ESPN.com. We'll see you next week from Phoenix. It's going to be even better. Guarantee it.